The following content is provided under a Creative Commons license. Your support will help MIT OpenCourseWare continue to offer high-quality educational resources for free. To make a donation or to view additional materials from hundreds of MIT courses, visit MIT OpenCourseWare at ocw.mit.edu. So, last time we've seen the curl of a vector field with components m and n, we defined that to be n sub x minus m sub y. And we said this measures how far that vector field is from being conservative. If the curl is zero and if the field is defined everywhere, then it's going to be conservative. And so when I take a line integral along a closed curve, I don't have to compute it. I know it's going to be zero. But now let's say that I have a general vector field. So the curl will not be zero, and I still want to compute a line integral along a closed curve. Well, I could compute it directly, or there's another way, and that's what we are going to see today. So, you know, say that I have a closed curve C, and I want to find the work. So there's two options. One is direct calculation, and the other one is Green's theorem. So, Green's theorem is another way to avoid calculating line integrals if we don't want to. Okay, so what does it say? It says, if, say, if C is a closed curve, And closing a region R in the plane, and I have to insist C should go counterclockwise. And if I have a vector field that's defined and differentiable. everywhere, not only on the curve C, which is what I need to define the line integral, but also on the region inside, then the line integral for the work done along C is actually equal to a double integral of the region inside of curl F dA. Okay, so that's the conclusion. And if you want me to write it in coordinates, maybe I should do that. So the line integral in terms of the components that, that's the integral of m dx plus n dy. And the curl is nx minus my dA. Okay, so that's the other way to state it. So, that's a really strange statement, if you think about it, because the left-hand side is a line integral. Okay, so the way we compute it is we take this expression m dx plus n dy, and we parameterize the curve, we express x and y in terms of some variable t, maybe, or whatever you want to call it, and then you will do a one-variable integral over t. This right-hand side here, it's a double integral, dA. So we do it the way that we learned how to a couple of weeks ago. You take your region, you slice it in the x direction or in the y direction, and you integrate dx dy after setting up the bounds carefully. Or maybe in polar coordinates, r d r d theta. But see, the way in which you compute these things is completely different. This one on the left-hand side lives only on the curve while the right-hand side lives everywhere in this region, inside. So here, x and y are related, they live on the curve. Here, x and y are independent. There just are some bounds between them. And of course, what you're integrating is different. Here, it's a line integral for work. Here, it's a double integral 
of some function of x and y. So, you know, it's a very perplexing statement at first. But it's a very powerful tool. So we're going to try to see, you know, how it works concretely, what it says, what are the consequences, how we could convince ourselves that, yes, this works, and so on. That's going to be the topic for today. Uh, any questions about the statement first? No? Okay. Oh, yeah, one remark. Sorry. So here it says counterclockwise. What if I have a curve that goes clockwise? Well, you could just take the negative and integrate counterclockwise, you know. Um, why do, I mean, somehow, why does the theorem choose counterclockwise over clockwise? You know, how does it know that it's counterclockwise rather than clockwise? Well, the answer is basically in our convention for curl. See, we, we've said curl is nx minus my and not the other way around, and that's a convention as well. So somehow, the two conventions match with each other. That's the best answer I can give you. So, you know, if you met somebody from a different planet, they might have Green's theorem with the opposite conventions, with curves going clockwise and the curl defined the other way around. I mean, probably if you met an alien, then I'm not sure if you would be discussing Green's theorem first, but just in case, you know. Okay. Uh, so that being said, so there's a warning here, which is that this is only for closed curves. Okay, so if I give you a curve that's not closed, and I tell you, well, compute the line integral, then, you know, you have to do it by hand. You have to parameterize the curve. Or, if you really don't like that line integral, you could close the path by adding some other line integral to it, and then compute using Green's theorem. But you can't use Green's theorem directly if the curve is not closed. Okay. So let's do a quick example. So let's say that I give you C, the circle of radius 1, centered at the point 2, 0. So, you know, it's out here. That's, that's my curve C. 